MCAS, or mast cell activation syndrome, is a constellation of symptoms that frequently affect a wide number of organs in the body at the same time. The diversity of its presentation often leads to frustration for physicians and patients alike. Let us take a closer look at this condition. The mast cell is an immune cell that develops from the bone marrow stem cells and that travels as an immature cell to the other parts of the body where it situates itself in the loose connective tissue of the organs and develops into a fully functional mast cell that takes part in the defense of the body as well as in inflammatory reactions that take place in the body. Mast cells are usually found in those areas of the body that interface with the environment and they become activated when immune globulin E binds the surface of the mast cell in allergic reactions and triggers the release of chemicals that we call mediators. These mast cells can also become activated by other factors such as bacteria or viruses or fungi or types of heavy metals or certain foods that we eat or even by some molecules that are produced in the body such as substance P. The mediators that are released by mast cells have an effect in all the organs of the body where the mast cells are located and they can produce a wide variety of symptoms. Mast cells, if they become overactive and produce these mediators inappropriately and excessively, cause a syndrome that we call MCAS or mast cell activation syndrome. Mast cells produce a vast number of mediators, including leukotrienes, prostaglandin D2, histamine, and tryptase. Because these mediators act on a wide variety of organs, the symptoms they produce are varied. For example, patients can have flushing, they can have urticaria or skin rashes, abdominal cramping, diarrhea, wheezing, itching, nasal congestion, they can experience a drop in blood pressure called hypotension or they may experience what we call syncope or fainting. They can have headaches, neuropsychiatric conditions such as anxiety and psychosis or they may experience racing of the heart, tachycardia. In very, very severe cases, they can experience anaphylaxis which is an allergic reaction that is, can be fatal. In less severe cases of mast cell activation, patients may suffer from chronic fatigue or refractory GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease in which the medications that are given are not effective or they may suffer from osteoporosis or anemias or have elevation of their liver enzymes or shortness of breath, throat irritation, they may have attacks of asthma, and they may even suffer from chronic hair loss. Some diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, fibromyalgia, and depression are frequently associated with MCAS. The broad variety of symptoms that are caused by the mediators that are released by mast cells causes a lot of confusion and quite frequently these diseases are not recognized as MCAS and patients are treated for years before a correct diagnosis is arrived at. In one study, the time that transpired between the onset of symptoms and the making of the correct diagnosis of MCAS was over 30 years. Very often, these symptoms do not meet the criteria for diagnosis of MCAS or mast cell activation syndrome, but they're still clinically relevant. 
because of the futility of making complaints to their physicians, many patients that suffer with MCAS often just simply stop reporting these symptoms at all to their doctors. Patients who are suffering from MCAS and who are frustrated with the care and the efforts of the providers that they see often end up bouncing from physician to physician and their frustration lasts for very very long periods of time. A good example of this would be patient X who presented to the emergency room with complaints of flushing, severe diarrhea, and anxiety, and brain fog, which he said were present for the three days prior to his appearance at the emergency room. The emergency room physicians did an examination and an evaluation and made a diagnosis of severe anxiety for which they promptly referred the patient to the urgent care center for psychiatric conditions without doing a thorough medical workup. Fortunately, this patient was seen six months prior to his visit in the emergency room by an ologist for a workup of tree nut allergies. He had told the allergist at that time that for years he'd been having bouts of severe diarrhea with previous onset of flushing of the face and the arms just prior to the bouts of diarrhea and sometimes accompanied by other symptoms such as brain fog but he also reported that in the five years prior to his appearance at the allergy clinic that these symptoms were getting progressively worse and that he was experiencing more frequent bouts of these episodes as well as more severe episodes of confusion and brain fogging. Fortunately, this allergist suspected that this patient was not suffering from an allergy and when the patient presented to the emergency room, he requested that they test the patient for MCAS and the appropriate studies were sent off. When the results came back, however, one of the test results was mildly elevated, the histamine, and the other one that was done at the time, the tryptase, was however normal. An empirical trial of medications for MCAS was started and the patient reported that he felt a marked improvement in his symptoms with the medication that was started but it was not until nine months later when a urine test was done during an actual episode that a definitive an accurate diagnosis of MCAS was made. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, like and share. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.